Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani. In today's video, we will explore the approvals app for Microsoft Teams and look at the new approval template capabilities which allows admins and team owners to create approval forms. They can create these forms from scratch or they can select from a pre-existing list of templates and publish them out. The requesters can then fill out these approval forms and begin the approval process. Let's get started with the video, but first, my introduction. Here in Microsoft Teams, the Approvals app allows us to quickly and easily create, manage, and share approvals directly from your Hub for Teamwork which is Microsoft Teams. To get started with the Approvals app, head over to Apps and search for Approvals. Click on the Approvals app and go ahead and install this. In my case, I already have it installed, so I can directly go and open my Approvals app. So I will click on Open, and this opens the Approvals app in Microsoft Teams. I can see it on the left-hand navigation rail, I can right click and pin this so that I always have the approvals app available for me in the left hand navigation rail. Here I can see all my approvals that I have received. I can check the status, when these approvals were created, who requested it and who it was sent to. I can also click on sent approvals to look at all the approvals that I have sent. I can also filter my requests based on the status, so I can look at all the approvals that are currently in requested status versus custom status. So if I click on requested, here is the list of approvals that are currently in requested status, they have not been responded to yet. These approvals are created at an environment level. So right here, I have the option to choose the different environments that are available as part of my tenant that I have access to. Currently, I am in the default environment for my tenant. To create an approval request through the Approvals app, we have the button right here that allows us to create an approval request. And this opens up the dialog wherein I can name my approval request, define who my approvers are. I can define whether I need all the approvers to respond or the first approver who responds, their decision would be considered the final decision of the approval action. I can add some additional details. I can add attachments from OneDrive, upload it from my computer, or attach any link. The approvers will get a couple of options to choose from. They can either approve the request or reject the request, and additionally add comments. If you would like to change the response options, you can click on custom responses here and define your own responses. For example, my request here is of type leave request, so I would like to provide the approvers with two options, yes and no. So I've selected custom responses. In my case, the first person to respond, their decision would be considered final. I will click on send, and this will now create the approval request and send notifications in Teams to those two approvers. Signing in to Teams as Sarah, who is one of the approvers, Sarah gets a notification in the activity feed from the approvals app that a new leave request has been submitted for her approval from Reza. Sarah can see the title of the approval, the details of the approval that I put in. Sarah can optionally enter commands. And then these are the custom responses that I provided wherein Sarah can respond with a yes or a no. Sarah submits her response. The response will be tracked. If we look at the dashboard of the approvals from Sarah's perspective, here is the leave request approval that was requested by Reza to Sarah and James. The response to this is yes. If I select this, I can see the entire chain of the approval process. And now signed in back into Microsoft Teams as Reza, I get a notification in my activity feed from the approvals app that a response has been made to my approval action. 
Here are all the details. I can also go to the approvals app and look at my sent approvals. Right here, I have that approval action that I sent. I can select this and look at the output of this approval action. Now in the approvals app, we have a new option now wherein we can create approval templates. So right next to the new approval request button, there are three ellipses right here. And we have the option now to manage templates. In here, I can go ahead and create a new template. And there are a wide variety of templates here that are provided for us to choose from. So for example, let's say I pick the template which is request for overtime. Then I can decide how would I like to publish this template out? Would I like this template to, to be published org wide so that everybody in my organization can leverage this template to create an approval request? I can even define specific people so that only these users have the option of creating approvals leveraging this template. Or I can also define this approval at a team level. So let's say I pick the team wide approval. This opens up a list of all the teams for which I am an owner of. Let's say I select the cat team. I click done. And this now opens up the template management interface. So the name of the template, the category of the template and a description for the template. All of this can be customized. I will select next. This now is the form that the user must fill out once they select the template to begin the approval process. And this form design experience actually leverages Microsoft Forms at the back end. So this is an integration between approvals in Teams and Microsoft Forms. So as part of this template, the form has a start date, end date, and a reason. All of these are mandatory fields. I can customize them. So if I select this, I can move this field up or down. I can define if the field is required, not required. I can even define restrictions. So this entire form design experience is backed up by Microsoft Forms. However, we only have three column types available today for the form design experience, the choice column, text columns, and date columns. I will keep the form as is, click next. And right here, I can define that when this template is leveraged to create an approval, would I like the user to define who the approvers are or would I like to pre-define the approvers? So in this case, I will keep it to let the requester enter the approver names. Once again, I have the option of defining custom responses if required. I will keep it as the standard approve and reject options. I can click on preview and this will now light up the form experience that the approver will get when they will use this template. And once I'm ready for this template to be pushed out, I will click on publish and this will now publish this template. So here is my team name and these are the list of templates that I have published as part of my team. And right here is that overtime template that I just published. I can make modifications to the template if required. I can disable these templates or enable these templates on the fly. These are my team based templates. I can look at templates that were created for specific people right here, or I can look at my org wide templates if I created any. Now any user who is a part of that Microsoft team has the ability now to leverage that template to create approval requests. So I'm logged in as Sarah, who is an owner of that Microsoft team called cat team. When Sarah creates a new approval request, right here, Sarah can use the standard approval request form, or Sarah can switch over to templates. And this will now list out all the templates that Sarah has access to. So Sarah, being a member of the CAT team has access now to the two templates that I enabled. One of them is the overtime template that we just created. So I will go ahead and select this. And this will now light up the Microsoft form. Sarah can define who the approvers are. Sarah must fill in all the mandatory fields. 
give a name for the approval request, and click send. And just like that, the approval request will now be created for the approver, which in this case is Reza. And here are the details of the approval request that just got created in the approval dashboard. Logging in as Reza, Reza heads over to the activity feed. Right here, I see the request that Sarah has sent. I can see the data of the form and I can make a decision right here whether I would like to approve this, reject this, and additionally enter any commands. I'll go ahead and approve this. And if we look at the activity feed now for Sarah, Sarah gets a notification that the overtime request has been approved. Now who can create these approval templates? So here I'm logged in with Sarah. If Sarah goes to manage templates, you see that the only option that opens up for Sarah here is the team, which is the cat team. That's because Sarah is an owner of just one team in my tenant. That means as an owner of the team, you can create templates that are specific to teams. So if Sarah tries to create a new template, and let's say Sarah picks the maintenance template here, the only option Sarah gets is to push this template out to the team for which Sarah is an owner of. On the other side, if Reza, who is the team's administrator, tries to create a new template, and Reza picks any of the existing templates here, Reza gets the options here to decide whether this template would be applied org-wide to specific people or team-wide. Now you can also create templates from scratch. So right here at the bottom, if I click create from scratch, I need to pick the type of my template for the org wide and specific people templates. If I select any of these and click create, there would be a process in which first a Microsoft team would get created to which you would be an owner of, and you can manage those templates at that specific admin team level. In this case, I'll just pick a team-wide template again and apply it to that same team. Click done. I can give my template a name. I can categorize this based on the categories available. Let's say I pick activity for this. I can define a description. I can click next. This is where I can design my form. So let's say I add a text field. Define this as issue ID make this a required field. I can add some restrictions. This needs to be a number. I will add a text column description, make this long answer and required. And finally, I'll add a date column, call it completed date. And this completes my form. I will click next. This time I will specify the approvers. So all the requests coming in from this template will go to Reza only for approval. I can click on preview once again, look at the form in action, and then click on publish, which will publish the template out to my team. Logging in as Sarah, who is a part of the team, Sarah creates a new approval request, goes to templates. I can see the new custom template that I created, which is issue tracker right here. Sarah can select this. fill in all the required fields, click send, and the approval request will go out to Reza only for approval. There is no option here for Sarah to define the approvers because they are already predefined. Creating a new template. I will select the work from home template. And this time I will build this as an org wide template. When you create your first org wide template in your tenant, it will first go ahead and create a Microsoft team called the approvals app admin team. That's where org white templates and templates that you build for specific users are created and stored. So here I have the work from home template. I will keep the form design as is set up the workflow settings, click preview so I can see the form in action and click on publish. And this will now go ahead and publish the org wide template. And right here under template management, under org wide, I can see the new org wide template that got created. 
I will create another template, select refund request for this one, and this time select specific people. And for adding a new template for specific people, right here is where we have to define who those users are for whom we are creating this template. So I can start selecting my users. You can even select Microsoft 365 groups. Click next, design the form, click next, set the workflow settings, click preview to preview the form in action and click publish. And here we have the specific people based template that got created for the following set of users. If I head over to teams, right here is the approvals app admin team that gets created the first time you create an org wide template or a template for specific people in your tenant. All the templates that I have been creating as part of the demo for this video, they are all getting created in Microsoft forms. So right here, signing in to Microsoft forms, I can see all my templates right here. For the org wide based templates or for the templates based on specific people, we can see that it's getting associated with the approvals app admin team. I can select the template right here. The form will be in read only mode in Microsoft forms. Now you can create these approvals directly from the approvals app or you can also create these approvals from teams or from chat or from a meeting. So right here in my cat team, if I head over to a new conversation, right here at the bottom, I have this option here for approvals. If I select this, it will light up the approvals experience, wherein I can create a new request or I can select any one of these existing templates. So in this case, let's say I pick a new request, I'll call this document approval. I would like Reza to approve this. I can click on add attachment and I can add an attachment to this approval process. I can get the attachment directly from Teams or from my OneDrive. I can upload it from my computer or attach a link. Let's say in this case, I pick OneDrive. I pick a specific file from my OneDrive and add it right here. Notice how the OneDrive sharing link applies right here and I can click send and this will now send the approval request to Reza. But not just that, in this team, I get this adaptive card experience that showcases approval action. So here's the approval name, here's the file that was attached, requested by Sarah, and awaiting a response from Reza. Logged in as Reza, so here is that approval action that got assigned to me. Since Reza is the approver, the adaptive card that's available directly in Teams, Reza can see the details, click on the link to the document, access the document, and decide whether he would like to approve or reject this. You can also click on view details, which will open up the detail experience of the approval action. And of course, I can directly respond in this adaptive card itself. So I just clicked on approved, and this request now gets approved. So a decision is taken now for this specific request. And as you can see, the adaptive card has completely transformed itself. It gives me the outcome of the approval, which is approved. Who's the requester? Who's the approver? Click on view details and look at all the details of that approval action, including the time they took to respond to the approvals. Now the approvals app, you can add it to a team. You can add it to a chat. So if you're having a chat conversation with a specific user, you can even apply it there. You can even add it to a meeting. And once you add this app to a team or to a chat or to a meeting, when you are in that specific context, my case here, I pushed out the approval to a chat conversation with Sarah. So right here, if I just type at approvals, this will now open up the approvals action right here in the chat experience itself. We will also have the ability to create an approval request wherein the response can actually come in the form of an electronic signature. We've seen how we can create an approval template and push it out to a team or to specific users or org wide. 
Then we saw how we can leverage the approval request by using those templates. We've seen the new attachment capabilities where you can attach files. Full markdown support is available. And finally, approving or rejecting an approval request in line directly in Teams conversations or chats in the form of adaptive cards. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.